So guys, it's day two and Joff is now on the oil change. I literally ran out of time last night to change the oil, but uh, anyway, we're going to get straight into this. Um, firstly, this morning, I actually um, had to get back to my supplier, actually, just to double check the recommendations for this vehicle. So this is a 19 plate Fiat Ducato. Um, I think the last time I was saying, I'm sure I had the, um, the Zero 03 last time, um, synthetic oil, fully synthetic oil, but um, he said, look, Joff, if you want the Duckhams, uh, they recommend for your vehicle, it's the 5W30. So uh, I wanted some uh, good quality. Um, the engine choice since 1899. So uh, I'm happy to see this stuff, to be honest. So it's look, it is um, the capacity of this thing's about 6.1 litres, I think. So we've got um, five litres here, and I've got a couple of um, single litres, so that'll just give me um, enough and a little bit more. Um, there is the oil filter, which is another genuine Fiat item. Um, there's the part number on there, um, although it's made in Turkey. Uh, so we'll just open the box and check that one out. So there's the filter to go on. So we'll be putting a little tiny bit of engine oil on that seal in a minute. The tools we need to do for this job, um, all I've got is a 12mm hex drive socket for the sun plug and a pair of my trusty grips that just grab all the oil filter and uh, remove it easily. Uh, there are oil filter removing tools available on the market if you want to go down that road, but these normally suffice to do the job. Um, they, they're pretty adjustable and they've taken taking off many an oil filter. So we're gonna undo the bonnet, give us a little bit of light from above, turn it up, and that's all we need to do for a minute. There is the oil filler cap, as we've obviously seen in previous videos that I've done, and we're gonna get underneath and uh, get this job done. So there's the sump plug that we've gotta remove, and uh, so I'm gonna uh, get my got my wrench, um, get my 12mm socket in there, undo that one, and get it draining. I've left this, this was it's been running for about 20 minutes, so it's uh, nice and hot, but not over the top, not absolutely roasting. But um, we'll let it dry, get it draining, and then we can let it drain for uh, as long as it takes to get that oil out, all the old oil. There he goes, just break that off. And uh, right, I'm just gonna get my oil pan. So with the oil drainer situated right underneath, we're just gonna remove that plug I've actually put a glove on now, and uh, there it is. There's all that uh, black oil. So anybody that doesn't uh, do this very often, um, if you're watching this video, um, so on this plug will be a copper washer. Um, so it's advisable to actually order a um, copper washer to go on your sun plug uh, for your vehicle if you want to change that. I did not actually... Um, order one up but I've got one um, in a box of multi-purpose uh, washers that I'm going to put on this plug um, to replace it not that it was leaking anyway there wasn't any problems there so um, they normally don't give any issues all that engine oil is just draining away nicely there's the filter we've got to remove and uh, I'm just going to get my trusty blue point pliers out of uh, removed many a filter with and just going to squeeze on there and uh, it's literally like that and uh, it undoes so now i've got to uh, move my draining pan up there probably might be a little bit of oil coming out of here we'll keep that running while we're just uh, there we go he's just coming past my pan there we go we'll just get it in the pan um, not to make too much of a mess so i just undo that again um, I'm kind of sort of switching between the camera and doing the job here, so uh, I would probably normally have a pair of gloves on, to be honest. It's advisable to have a pair of gloves on uh, to do this job, because this oil can make uh, dermatitis on your skin, stuff like that. So um, let's just get that filter. I'm gonna just pop my hand in my pocket, grab one of my rags that I've carry, and I'm just gonna undo that and let's get that filter dropped in out of the way. There we go, drop it in the pan out of the way. Just uh, wipe off the excess oil around here. That'll just drip away for a minute. It's not a 
problem, just clean off the face where the filter sits. It's all good. So we'll just give that another 10 minutes to uh, drain away out of the, uh, the sump. There's the oil draining away. So there's the filter. What we'll do is just put a little tiny bit of oil around there. Yeah, so the difference between that zero and the five W30 is just viscosity, really. Uh, the obviously the zero is a lot. Well, it's it's thinner. It's probably not even noticeably thinner with a lot of these synthetic oils these days. So uh, there's that filter ready for the install. And obviously, uh, I think anybody that hasn't got the facility of a, a pit or a ramp to use, there's the filter going back on. We're just going to uh, screw that up by hand. This is possibly um, my Malenko blocks get the front up and probably another set of Malenkos or something like that where you could get the back up. Um, I've been to campsites where we've been on sort of inclines where it's a perfect opportunity to drain the oil out. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you... Um, or some ramps, obviously they need to be fairly heavy duty for a van, but they are available, um, you know, so that you can just run the vehicle up on, and, and then you can um, do this job um, underneath without too much grief. I've done it, I've done it before many a time. So there we go, look, there's just that little excess running off there. But um, just a hand, hand tight on there, and that's uh, job done, that's beautiful. So there we go, it's all nearly exhausted now, so I'm just gonna pop that plug back into the sump, like that, and just take her up there. And I have my trusty little torque wrench here. So uh, recommendations of it's, uh, for about 25 to 30 Newton meters. So this, this is actually set to uh, 30 Newton meters. So let's just uh, tweak her up. There she goes. It's not, I would have probably actually gone a little bit more tighter than that, like that. But uh, there we go. That's 30 Newton meters, clicking away, perfect. And uh, nice just to uh, put a cloth over that. Just wipe it round. Right, so now that's all complete underneath, which is really, really simple. Um, go up and get the oil back in. So, remove the filler cap. Like that. And then I've got a nice little trusty funnel. It's got a bit of a spout on it, but I'm going to remove this spout. And these little funnels are absolutely superb. Look at this. That fits in there, a dream. So then, no problem with any spillage. So let's get that oil. And I'm just gonna tip that in there. Look at that. Doesn't that make you feel good? Wow, five liters of quality Duckham's QS. So we have got the fuel filter to do, we have got the air filter to do, and we have got the pollen filter to change. So that's all to, um, all to come. Get this oil in, look at that. Right, I'm not gonna bore, I'll turn the camera off for a minute because I'm not gonna bore you with it. <laughs> So that was the five litres gone in, and now I'm just going to, uh, cool, nearly miss with that. Oh, <laughs> steady on, Geoff, getting overexcited. Um, but yeah, there's another litre. So then that'll just give me enough to uh, start the engine, refill that empty filter, and just give it a recheck, and it might just take another little smidgen just to get it right up on the maximum mark on the dipstick. But there we go. So that is uh, that is actually six litres. Um, beautiful. And we'll just replace the filler cap. Back into the cockpit, and uh, basically what we need to do is uh, 
just keep an eye on the, the oil light that is there. So we'll just go for a little crank. There we go. Oil light just takes a second, there he goes, and uh, we're up to oil pressure. So we just let that idle for a second. And then we can uh, stop the engine, recheck the engine oil level. Let's see how close we are. Get that dipstick out. Sometimes it's when the oil's been changed, it uh, takes a bit of uh, actually seeing on the dipstick because it's so clean. But um, we'll get a nice little uh, view of that um, dipstick if we possibly can. And uh, that is the maximum, that is the minimum down there, them little uh, cutouts. Hopefully we can see that. Uh, right, okay, let's dip that back in. We're going to pull that out and we are probably just a another little tiny dribble of oil just to bring him up on the mark. Yeah, I think it's about 6.1. So they've got these little increments on here. So I think we're going to go for just probably that amount. Let's have a little look. So we're just going to go for... that much there um, so we're down to the first little increment we'll leave it there and um, there's a little increment there so I'm, I've just uh, emptied that much in down to that first increment and we'll re-dip again just let that run down a second and uh, re-dip engine oil yeah I think we might just need to put one more little increment in it's just about four mil from the, the top so I'm just going to go for another little uh, increment of that oil get it spot on there we go another little uh, these are just the very final little adjustments so yeah just just below that next increment Take the funnel out again and give it a re-dip. <laughs> right, we must be getting close now. There's the more dipstick. In we go. In we go. And that is absolutely spot on the nail. So there we go. That's job done. Let's get that dipstick back in there. And we, just a little tiny couple of splashes there specs wipe that up on with the cap just uh, wipe that round and uh, that is mission completed for the oil change we're back on the near side of the vehicle and the fuel filter is located inside there so let me do it a few times now one screw there one screw up there the headlight plug there that's going to be uh, removed and uh, gives you more access room to do this job. So we'll do that. We'll get that out of the way. guys the next thing to undo there's a little tiny it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to see it there's a yellow tab just on the end of there which you've got to flick up and then push the electrical block across 
like a sideways action and then it just comes up and releases so there's the top plug released see if i can just tuck that away up around the back of there just to keep it out of the way and then we have then we have um two connections for the fuel lines which is the yellow and the blue which is over the back there okay so basically um so i'll do the blue one first if you just push that sideways you can see a white tab in there and all you need to do then is squeeze that little tab together with your fingers and release and that comes off and the same with the yellow there's the yellow one so all we need to do is just push that down release uh, hang on there he goes yeah you can see it. i'll just move it so you can see that so it just literally pushes down in with the tabs and pulls off super simple so that's the two fuel connections so what we're going to do now we're going to undo the body and take the whole unit out so there's a couple of six mil bolts which will be a 10 mil socket there is my socket on that bolt now so i'm just going to uh, undo that one and we'll remove that bolt i probably can do it by hand now just whip that one out like that. and then just on the opposite side is another one i might have to reposition my camera so this is uh, probably a little bit teasy whilst uh, filming it so i'll just do my best i might be able to just sneak on the end of there i've got a wobble drive extension on this so it gives me a little bit of so there we go there's the second one coming undone in this kind of area there's my little wobble drive coming through let me uh, just take the ratchet off and then i can probably just undo that with the wobble drive and an extension so you can see the filter actually dislodging straight away so it's quite a nice little simple operation especially with that headlamp out of the way don't even hesitate and uh, just even if you've got time just um, lubricate the bolts up on that headlight unit seriously because they become seized up and then you can't do nothing with them so there's the actual fuel filter unit and that is actually going to come right out through now just a little bit of a jiggle there we go i'm just going to uh, just take it out like that there it is and is the special tool that i've got is no bloody good so i still needed to get a bloody voice and uh, to undo it so here we go well neil thanks a lot just green out the excess diesel there and there's the uh, filter that looks pretty black actually look at this is that black i've got a little better look in a minute okay so we are just popping the filter in and uh, all we have left is a little tiny o-ring which is going to uh, discard that one shut that one on the bottom of there absolutely bloody perfect yeah so i've just kind of spun it around actually there's a mo i think it says mopar on the front of there so that um needs to be facing outwards there's the little bracket for the fuel line and we're just going to push that bolt back in that one and do that one up just to catch it and then we'll uh, get the other bolt and uh, put on the other side and I get the little extension in there and where's that one up put the ratchet on that one and then we're just going to come through underneath on the other one and down the 
down there. So it's pretty nice little straightforward operation really. Just needed that um, vice for that uh, big nut underneath. Come through on that angle. I've got a camera, so obviously it's uh, made it a little bit more beautiful. Okay, that's that one. So we go for the little blue one first, or snick that on, push that across. How nice is this? Yellow. On, clipped in. And the electrical plug that we tucked up around the back, that's gonna come down and basically slide on there. And uh, yeah, we're in. Little uh, yellow lock tab on the side, down in the lock position. And that is job done. Headlight back in, it's a 10 minute job. Light back in position. Catch them, I'll put the electrical plug in there like that and snick that in and then we will flick that over to do up and uh, T30s. Take these out, clean them up, put some oil on, makes it so much easier. One up in the corner. A funny kind of plastic one that I'm always taking out all the time. And it just goes so well with a little bit of lubrication on it. Right, all we got to do now is turn the ignition on, pump the fuel up. Turn the ignition on, just give it a chance to uh, pump itself up, primer it up. Give it a few minutes to uh, pump itself up and then hopefully, here we go, turn the ignition on and away she goes. today is the air cleaner which is situated down in a big cylindrical container on the near side of the vehicle so what I'm gonna do to make it easier for me to actually film it as well and access it is I'm gonna quickly whip out my headlight so there's the usual bolt in there there's the plug which I can easily um, just pull that back there Pull that little clip back there and unplug that and then there's another uh, little torque up there so i'll get them out i'll get the headlamp lamp out and then we'll have a better look This gives us a lot more access in from this side. You can see the container there, the cylindrical shaped air cleaner box, and there are four screws. They are little uh, crosshead screws, one at every corner. So we'll next is get them removed, and then we can get the top cover off it. screwdriver fits in into the screws four of those pretty simple number three and the last one is down the back there So basically, if you were taking your motorhome down to Morocco um, in really dusty conditions, it's uh, good to know how to actually clean out your air filter or replace your filter. 
in this instance because they do suck in a lot more dust in that sort of climate. This air cleaner, so, uh, so yeah, that maintenance um, contract that I had with this vehicle, um, let's just have a little look and see what it's like. So it looks reasonable there's a lot of dust on the top of there i must admit but actually the um and yeah it's, it's definitely just sort of on the edge of needing changing so that's uh, that's nice we'll take that out get rid of that element there's a better look at the element yeah you can see that uh, blackness on there look. So that is destined for the dustbin. Um, we'll just have a look down in the container because it's always nice to wipe that container out as well. Just get yourself a nice little cloth because sometimes there is, you do get a bit of debris in the bottom. So it's always nice just to wipe that out. Um, there's some nice little drain holes in there look, just in case any water does penetrate it, which is down on that side, which is perfect. So let's get the new element. There we go, there's the element. It's actually made in Italy, which uh, is a nice refreshing change to know. Um, and there's the, uh, obviously the part number for it. Um, and uh, right, let's uh, get in that box. It's like Christmas. Oh yeah, all the way from Italy. Let's have a little look in there then. There he is, like, beautiful. Right, we'll just discard that box down there for a second and the element will just actually sit in there. Beautiful, sat in there, superb. And then, just a case. Nice with that, uh, so with the headlight out. Um, there we go. Yeah, so it's just a reversal what we did previously with the four screws nicely secured back into position tighten them down there's one around the back over this side so that's going to make the engine breathe a lot more easier. Always good for fuel economy. You see these vehicles black smoking, although a lot of that is injectors, but you get a blocked air filter. But uh, it's always nice to know you've got a nice brand new air filter in there. If it hasn't had the red headlamp out before, there's a little slot just there, and there's another slot on your headlamp unit that actually slots into that on a bit of an angle it's uh, pretty straightforward but it just gives you a lot more access for doing jobs like this sort of that kind of angle like that look at that in like that beautiful and then back in with the torque screws one at the front to get a little bit of oil on them as well and we'll replace that plug slots in and then we got the last one it goes up in the top corner keep them lubricated and then you can just take them out easily if you need to get to that headlamp bulb on the road it's, it makes life so much easier there it is Perfect. Just having a little visual check around, making everything uh, sure it's um, all got up to speed. It wasn't that long ago, guys, I actually done the wax oil job. Um, I've just been underneath, actually, um, again, and just uh, thrown some more um, electrical coating 
spray on these connections back here this is where that um, big electrical block is at the back of your vehicle that does normally give a lot of trouble because I normally just coat that in that um, electrical spray wax oil and it just keeps all that water out look at that terminal up there as well it's just like sealed right in there's no corrosion there that is absolutely perfect so we're just um, just having a little look around underneath um, these uh, where my um, alarm system is um, um, these little brackets were getting a little bit um, corroded, but just for the time being, I've just uh, given them another um, coating in um, sealer um, spray and uh, all these electrical connections here and just the little screws just give them a little coating all that sold for the winter you know the miles we did um even coming around to my wheel winch look there's my wheel winch there's my spare wheel still all uh, wrapped up looking a bit raggedy <laughs> um, one day i'll probably get a new cover on that but I'm, i sort of loathe to um disturb it too much while um you know at the end of the day it's all up there nice and neat and uh, i've d recently checked the tire pressure through the hole in the bottom um, I made a bit of an incision and uh, sort of like tried to not make it too bad. The, um, we showed you that handbrake linkage um, last night and I've just give that a good spray up with some lubricant up there as well on the cables, making sure everything runs free. Um, just moving forward, um, yeah, just had a little wipe round and had a clean off of a few bits and pieces. Um, you know me, I'm trying to make it as shiny underneath as I am on top. But um, yeah, and then we've cleaned up the um, the water pipe here, the discharge. I've lubricated the um, pivot, the little uh, um, butterfly valve in there that's uh, um, for the water drain. Um, yeah, that one there, I'll just give it a... Oh my, Oh, that's a bit of a nuisance. My uh, torch has just gone dead. But um, had a good spray around. Um, again, uh, the element for the wastewater um, for a winter heater element has just been uh, re-plastered in spray as well as the earth post up there. And just generally um, having a look around, um, give the old uh, exhaust silencer a wipe over. And, uh, oh, I'll tell you what I have just done as well, is my electric step. Um, we did have a little bit of an issue with it on the road the other day, uh, where some of these nuts were, um, they were nearly rattled off, um, which um, all of a sudden, they, I, I don't know why, I've tightened these up, not over the top tight at the moment, but um, I've tightened them up, and the step is um, all tickety-boo, and I've given it a good lubrication up on all the pivots. They get very dry. Um, at the end of the day, you want to keep your step lubricated, uh, definitely. Um, and uh, up to the front, uh, looking at the subframe, I've clean. I've sort of give this a bit of a wipe round and um, thrown. I, I did notice when I was doing the oil change. Actually, I've just put some um, um, waxy sort of coating on the bottom of the sump. It was just getting a little bit. It's not nothing too bad, but it was just getting a little bit bit of rust showing on the front here. Um, it's nothing really. It's only a bit of surface. It just needs a little bit of a rub off at some point, and uh, then a coat of paint, bit of spray paint. The um, starter. You can see the new oil filter that's up there now, and uh, there's the starter motor, which I've just done all the um, terminals again give them another lash up because um, you do get corrosion it's just so exposed at the front there uh, with the with the wires so you just don't want to get any as soon as it starts going green you've got you're going to have a problem so um, it's always good to give them a good um, battery coating spray uh, all over them and just generally I've, I've put some spray grease over the the bottom of the um, transmission and um, yeah um, just, just generally sort of looking around, and uh, I think that's about it, really. I thought I'd just give you a little look underneath and um, just give you an update on uh, what's happening. But, um, yeah, it's all pretty good. It's all nice clean and like I say it wasn't that it was only um, about a year ago that I did all this wax oil and uh, at some point I'll probably just give it another fair road steam off and then just give it another coating but um, yeah I think that could be a wrap for today job done and uh, like I say um, them discs all replaced in there now with the uh, the alley wheels back on and um, 
Yeah, she's looking pretty good. Looking nice and clean. 